What is up guys, it's your boy Noah from NWC Entertainment where I bring you guys Nick's content every single week. And today we're talking about a big topic. NBA TV or NBA in general did make a list of course. They always have the list of like the top star who's most likely going to be a star and the rookie class and all that. I've seen a bunch of Instagram posts by Nick's pages. Of course I'm a big Nick's fan, that's why I have this page in general. If you want to go follow my Porzingis page, I upload a bunch of dope Porzingis' content. I think I thought it would be really cool to do a Porzingis page, especially with his whole recovery and his whole journey back to all have the, all that footage, all those awesome photos to document it and put it on that Instagram. But I hope you guys enjoyed the setup today. I just put some Nick's um I put some Nick's um gameplay in the back of I NBA mean, 2K18. Sorry guys, I sadly Which lost the clearly footage of the NBA 2K18 footage. In right the background, now, I have some Nick's and some Thunder gameplay or whatever, but I'm sorry, I just tried to keep it more entertaining. That way with the gameplay in the back. But the footage was sadly accidentally deleted. But anyway guys, enjoy the video. Okay, they put Frenia Lakina as the biggest bust from this last draft um, of the current draft that just passed. And before we get into this, I want to let you guys know... The NBA Draft Lottery is tonight. I don't know if it's going to be up already before the lottery starts. It is at 7.30. And let's pray. Put prayers down below in the comment section. I want to thank you guys so much for the support to get a top five pick. It would be awesome if we drafted a player like Michael Porter Jr. But I would not be mad at all if we get a top nine pick and get Mikel Bridges there. Or Miles Bridges or Kevin Knox. Kevin Knox is the most raw prospect and is the biggest risk in my opinion. And Miles Bridges, he does have that NBA frame, but it seems like he gets too tired on the court. But to me, the safest pick is Mikel Bridges. And it would be awesome to pick a player like Michael Porter Jr. if he slips to us or if we get a top five pick. That would just be completely awesome, but knowing our luck, we're not. But yeah, it would just be insane if we did get a top five pick somehow. But anyway, guys, they're talking about Frank Milikina is the biggest boss of this past draft. The reason I hate the word bust is because they're in the NBA for a reason, and he really never had high expectations to live up to. No one put high expectations on his back. Is it just because he plays in New York? He's a point guard for New York. People are relying on him for the future. He's 19 years old from France, but was actually born in Belgium. And it's very hard, guys, to translate your game from overseas to the NBA. It's a lot slower pace overseas. That's why Luka Doncic, don't expect him to be crazy good his rookie year, because a lot slower pace overseas in Europe. It's a lot more of a team game, a lot more, a lot less. You don't rarely see, you rarely see um, overseas in China. Of course, people be dropping like 50 a game, 40 a game, like Jimmer Fredette drops like 30, 40 a game overseas. The competition not as nearly as what Frank was playing against and Luka Doncic is playing against grown men. I know they play against grown men in China too, but like it's more of a team game. You rarely see players put up 30, 40 a game. That's why it's awesome to see Luka Doncic put up 17. That's why when Frank put up 5.6 a game overseas, he came off the bench. You have to remember that. And you guys are probably wondering, why would a player that came off the bench like um, end up getting drafted? You don't realize, guys, like, he has such a high upside. I believe in his upside. He's a great shooter, in my opinion. He might have had a rookie year. He might have been rushing his shots because he has to get adjusted to the speed of the NBA today. It's a lot faster pace, and it starts to slow down for you in your own way. Of, of course, it was slower pace overseas, but his shot is starting to fall a lot more at the end of the year as he had a career-high 17 or season-high 17 points against the Cavs and 16 again. Bigger the stage, it seems like the better he plays. Like, he had the 13-point game against the Warriors, and then he had the 13-point game against the Lakers the one year, um, or this year, last season just, just ended. Of course, hitting some clutch shots and then over Lonzo Ball, over Kyle Kuzma, a lot stretched longer arms. Um... Frank Nielkin has a high ceiling with his wingspan, 6'5", point guard. He has the potential to be a great two guard, point guard slash shooting guard. And how are you going to call someone to bust off their first year? He has to get a um, shaky start, only 5.9 points per game, nearly like 4 assists, and 2.3 rebounds, 3 rebounds, and nearly a steal a game. At the beginning of the season, he was just cooking. He had 6 steals. He's stripping LeBron. He was playing awesome defense. He still was throughout the whole year, and he was getting in inconsistent minutes. From Jeff Hornacek, who, in my opinion, is not a good coach at all. I want to thank you all for all you did, Jeff Hornacek. You did literally nothing, but, like, he gave him inconsistent minutes. Like, he would give Frank 20 minutes a game, and then he would give him, like, 5-10 a game. Like, he's our point guard of the future. We draft him with the 8th overall pick. Why are you barely giving him any minutes? And Steve Mills and Scott Payer are saying, 
they rely on him. They know he's going to be your future. That's why we're not drafting a point guard. I heard that we're drafting a shooting guard size small forward because we definitely need help in the wing positions because a lot of players of our wings are out of position. Like Tim Hardaway Jr., his true position is shooting guard. Corny Lee's true position is shooting guard also. So it's out of position when we put one of them at small forward, which really frustrates me, in my opinion. So, like, these players have very, very high upsides. They could be very, very good players. Um, like, Frank Neal Keena, I think he's going to be a great player once his jump shot starts falling a lot more like he should at the end of the season. His defensive ability is just off the charts. Because you don't understand, once you come in the league with defense, all you have to do is find your footing on offense. The worst case scenario, he could be a Marcus Smart type player. And I do not have a problem with that whatsoever. Marcus Smart, he... He's not the most consistent three-point shooter, but he is solid. His defense really gets into people's minds, gets um, um turning over the ball. Marcus Smart shows a big impact on the Boston Celtics. People, he was the sixth overall pick. He's a high defensive upside. He might not be the craziest on offense, but this dude is one hell of an on-ball defender. I know it's not a big deal. Frank Nielkino is number one in pick and roll defending in the league, but to me, that's big. Being a rookie, number one in a statistical category, um, I know it's not the craziest of stat, but number one in pick and roll defending is really good. And he has real passion for the game. Not like he has no passion at all. He still has a talent. He just barely attempted any shots at all at the beginning of the season. And then at the end, when he's really starting to heat up, when he takes 10 plus shots a game, he scores more points. He just needs to have that confidence. And when he adapts a mid-range game, three-point game, and to me, he can be a flashy player. People are just doubting him because he's, um, he's not a flashy player like Desmond Jr. doing windmill dunks. But I've seen him in practices throwing down windmill dunks. That's just not his game. He likes to stay solid. He likes to play his game because he's not doing all this flashy shit. He wants to win basketball games. He's not a crazy flashy, flashy player. But I think his potential would be great. But to me, that's absurd. A calling player a bust off their rookie year. To me, that is just terrible. And he's a high defensive upside, high offensive upside. He's gonna work hard in the gym. I know his work ethic, determination, he's a high basketball IQ, and I know he's gonna be a great player in the long run for us. He may not be the greatest right now. He may not even be the greatest next year. He may not show the most eye-boggling stats, but he has great potential. Once he gets his handle better, his shot better, he's gonna be a great player in this league. And to me, um, I don't know if we're reliable um, sources that I saw on next pages uploading about on Instagram about the MBTV ranking Frank as the biggest boss of this um, draft that just passed. I don't know if I should rely on that resource though, if it really was real or not. But he is not a boss. I'm sorry, he is not a boss at all. I think he has a high, extremely high upside. In three years, he might even be a top five player in that draft class. I just think he's gonna be a great player. And how are we not talking about Jonathan Isaac? I know he was injured a lot, but this dude averaged 5.2, 5.4 a game. It's only because he plays with Orlando Magic and they get a, no attention whatsoever. But I think Frank Nielakina has a very high upside. Trust me, he's going to be good. If he doesn't end up being good, then I don't know what to say, guys. I think he's going to be a great player. He has an eye upside. He has an extremely good work ethic. I hear nothing but good things from Frank Nielakina. And I honestly think he's going to be a great player. Let me know down below in the comment section what is Frank Nielakina's comparison. I believe he's going to be his own player. But look at Kobe Bryant his first year. Look at Kawhi Leonard his first year. Look at Giannis Antetokounmpo their first year. Jimmy Butler. All these great all-stars that started off with defense ended up having an extremely high upside. So to me, he barely has a worst case scenario. If he ends up being a solid defender, I'm, I'm glad with that as long as it helps us win basketball games and I know he's going to be a great player. I have a feeling he's going to grind all summer and he's going to get it done. He's going to be our starting point guard next season. I believe him in believe in him as our starting point guard. Imagine him with Mikel Bridges and when Porzingis does come back, we're going to have one hell of a defense front court and back court. Except Ennis Cantor if he opts out. I hope he opts out honestly. And if you haven't seen the recent video, make sure to click the link in the description. I explain why um, I want Ennis Cantor to opt out and stuff. Um, but I appreciate all you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to smash the like button, subscribe for more content, more weekly Knicks content. And yeah, just put prayer down below in the comment section. I'm praying we get a top five pick. Or if we get top six, top seven, I would be so happy with that. But yeah, make sure to smash the like button, subscribe, put post notifications on. And for weekly Knicks content, go Giants also. Go Yankees, go all New York. And I'm out, guys.